we're going to do the first sec uh, the first half of section five this time. Uh, and that is on exponents and roots. And then we're going to skip and do averages. And I have a question mark because I'm not sure why that's in this section. But it is, so we'll cover it. We can do that. Uh, the first thing is exponents. And you see here that we have 2 to the fourth power. And you should already know that the 2 is called the base. And the 4 is the exponent. Now, what those do is the base is telling you what number are you going to multiply. So the number to multiply. And the 4 tells you how many times to multiply that number. All right, and I hope you are taking notes and getting this down. So this says we're going to take 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 because 2 is our base. It's the number we multiply. 4 is how many times we multiply it. So 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. So 2 to the 4th power is 16. And that's how you would read that, 2 to the 4th power. If you have a 2, we say it's squared. So this is negative 7 squared. And so that simply means we're going to take the negative 7 times itself two times. So negative 7 times negative 7. A negative times a negative is a positive. So that would be 49, a positive 49. Now, I wanted to show you, be careful, because if you have negative 7 squared and it looks like this, what this is saying is the 7 is squared, not the whole negative 7, because the, the squared, the exponent is right next to just the 7, whereas this held the negative and the 7 together as one part, one term. So this whole thing was squared. So this is just going to be uh, 7 times 7, and we want the negative of that. So 7 times 7 is 49, and we want that to be negative. So we want the opposite of 7 squared. Here we've got parentheses around our negative 2 thirds. So we're going to multiply the whole thing as our base, the whole negative 2 thirds. And um, 3 is our exponent. And so when we read that, we read that uh, negative 2 thirds cubed. So 2 can be squared. And I just realized I don't know how far up you can see on the camera. <laughs> that says squared. And the 3 means uh, you would read it cubed. Alrighty. So what that says is negative 2 thirds times negative 2 thirds times negative 2 thirds. And when we do that, we simply multiply 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. And 3 times 3 is 9 times another 3 is 27. And now we go down to our rule for the negative base. If we have a negative base and the exponent is even, then your answer is going to be positive because all of those exponents match up in pairs. And if you have two negatives together, that makes a positive. So these two are going to make a positive, but there's one left over. So if you have an odd exponent, so if you have an odd exponent, you're going to have one negative left over. And so your answer is going to be negative. So if you have an even exponent, on a negative base, your answer is positive. If you have an odd exponent on a negative base, your answer is negative. I hope that was clear as mud. So in this case, because we have a 3 on a negative uh, exponent, we're going to have a negative answer. So negative 8 27ths. All right? So when, we, so when you take it, when you use an exponent, you just multiply over and over and over again. So now, just like with adding, we have subtracting to undo it. And with multiplying, we have dividing to undo it. With exponents, we have square roots because you know I didn't want to always leave it easy. So we've got to, so a square root is the inverse of a square. And the inverse simply means the opposite. So this little division looking sign is actually a radical sign. Not a psi, a sign. And the number inside is going to be our radical. So the 25 is the radical, and that weird-looking division sign is our radical sign. And this simply says, 
What did we multiply together to get 25? What number did we multiply by itself to get 25? And that, of course, is, well, 5 times 5 is 25, so your answer is square root of 5 is 25. Let's do a few of those. If I want the square root of 144, well, we simply say, what did you multiply times itself to get 144? And the answer, of course, is 12 times 12 is 144. Something you need to know, if you have the, um, the square root of a fraction, you can either divide this first inside the fraction, if that makes the problem easier, or you can divide that into two, uh, into two different radicals, uh, and then and then just divide their answers. So the square root of 49 divided by the square root of 81. And this, in this case, this is easier because the square root of 49 is 7, and the square root of 81 is 9. And so our final answer is just 7 ninths. So you can either treat them together or you can treat them separately and your answer is going to end up being the same. Um, what if I were to say I want the square root of negative 25? Well, the square root says that I have to multiply the same number times itself to get this. Is there any number that I can multiply by itself to get a negative? And the answer is no, because if you multiply a positive times a positive, you get a positive. If you multiply a negative times a negative, you get a positive. There's no way to multiply the same thing and get a negative answer. So your answer is that there are no real roots. The, uh, the, uh, the square root of a negative number there are no real roots. There are some imaginary uh, numbers, and we'll talk about that later. Um, that will be fun later, but for right now, no. However, there is something that you need to remember. When we said the square root is the inverse of a square, that's undoing that square. So we're saying, well, what did we multiply together to get that 25? Let's just go back to the positive 25. Well, what did we multiply together to get 25? Well, we said that a positive times a positive, so 5 squared is 25. But what if I took negative 5 squared? Because a negative times a negative is also a positive. So won't that also give me 25? Sure enough. So a square root, a number actually has two square roots, the positive of that number and the negative of that number. Both of them are square roots because when you square them, they end up being positive. And you can, you can uh, put that answer as uh, the square root of 25 is a plus or minus 5. And this symbol here, plus on top of a minus, means plus or minus. It means we've got both answers there together. And so this is actually two answers, a positive 5 and a negative 5. So there's a section in your homework where it asks, what are, the, what are all the square roots? This is what you want. Um, when you have a square root, a square root symbol, usually we're just asking for the positive. So uh, the section that just has the square root symbols and says what's the principal square root, I think the book calls it, the principal square root is simply the positive square root of the, answer, uh, of the, um, of the radical. And usually in real life, that's what we're looking for. Um, but in some, some types of problems, we do want, uh, we do care about the, the positive and the negative. You just need to make sure that you keep in mind that multiplying two negatives also equals a positive. All right, so I told you this was a quick and easy section because now we're going to move. So that's exponents. You just multiply over and over again. With roots, we figure what did I multiply together to get this number? So it's like dividing over and over again. So I'm not really sure how the average fits in with this type of stuff. So I'm wondering if they just, uh, the writers of this book just decided, oh, I don't know, this doesn't go with anything and there's some extra space here. So um, I am guessing that you have figured these before. So we'll just uh, go really quickly through this also. Remember that the average, usually when we talk about an average, we're talking about the mean. There are several different types of averages and we're not gonna cover all of them. We're just gonna talk about the mean today. Um, the mean, you just add the numbers that you have. Usually it's a list of numbers and we want to know the average between them. So you add up those numbers and then count how many numbers did I have and divide by that. I'll show you what I mean with this cute example. Here we go. 
We've got our friend Sam, and Sam has some test scores. His test scores are 86, 95, 78, 82, and 84. And I want to know what is his test average. And I'm going to tell you a secret. I just realized I didn't do this ahead of time, so hopefully all of my math is going to add up. Uh, because So what we have to do is we want the total on top, and we're going to divide by the number of numbers. And in this case, we've got one, two, three, four, five test scores that we're adding up. So we're going to divide by five. So we're going to add the 86 plus the 95 plus 78 plus 82 plus 84. Here, let's scooch this over a little bit. And we're going to divide all of that by five. And I'm wondering, hopefully, I have a handy dandy little old fashioned calculator in here. Oh man, here we go. I do in a drawer that got stuck. How embarrassing. Okay, so you would simply add the 86 plus the 95 plus 78. Are you doing it with me? Plus 82. Or did you already do it while I was looking for my calculator? That would be cool. All right, so I get 425 when I add all of those numbers up and then divide by five, and I should be able to do that in my head. 40 would be eight and 25 would be five. So his test average is an 85 for, for that section, for whatever it is that he's covering there. So add the number of numbers, divide by the number of numbers that you have, and that's your average. So uh, quick and easy section, and I will see you next time.